Hello, this is Amos Tarfa. As you guys know, we're doing a series this summer on different professions and careers and helping young people figure out some direction as to what they want to do with their lives. So today I'm wearing my medical physicist hat and so I'm in a surgery uh, center and basically I wanted to talk a little bit about what a medical physicist does and just maybe the field of radiology for a second. Okay, so um, in medical physics, there is a specific type of machine called a C-arm. It's called a C-arm and it's used for fluoroscopy. So I'm gonna quickly show you what a C-arm looks like and then let's, um, we'll continue our conversation, okay? So this is called a C-arm. Um, okay, so I've put it and I'll turn it back here. So this is called a C-arm. A C-arm is basically used for procedures that involve seeing uh, live images of internal uh, activity in, in, in people, of course, or it's used for giving injections and being able to locate what the spot needs to be for those inj injections. Uh, it's also used for um, barium swallows. So it's used by speech pathologists. Well, not the C-arm itself. I guess you could use that, but the idea of fluoroscopy, okay? That's what the C-arm is used for. So this is a C-arm. This is called the image intensifier or the II. That's what this part is. Um, and basically, this is the x-ray tube right here. Now, remember, x-rays were discovered in 1895 uh, in Germany. You could talk about the history in our History of Science course, which we'll talk about later. But this is an x-ray tube. It emits radiation and that radiation then comes to the image intensifier, and then that, those images show up on a computer monitor, just like your standard computer monitor. Okay, so this is called uh, an, a C-arm, but there's other things that I use for fluoroscopy. This one is just a very common one. Okay, let's pick it up. For me. You guys have seen what a C-arm is. So what does a medical physicist do? Well, C-arms emit radiation, large amounts of radiation actually, depending on what setting you use. And so you can use a C-arm to see images uh, that are blurry and grainy, but that means that the radiation dose is lower. But the more you increase the radiation dose, the clearer the images will look. But here's the thing, do you need the images to look like high definition TV images all the time? No, you don't want that, right? Because that means there's a lot of radiation. So what is the best um, a, a setting to use on patients? That's what a radiation physicist deals with, okay, or, or a medical physicist. And so in my role, and I'm wearing lead apron right here, right? So I have a lead apron, I have a thyroid collar, and then I have this thing that makes me look like a ninja, right? That's, the, that, that's uh, supposed to be a shield here because sometimes when I do these tests, the radiation is happening. I mean, this radiation, but you have to wear things to block, um, you know, the radiation, and this is one of the things we use. We use these lead um, garments. Now, part of what a medical physicist does is that a medical physicist, number one, needs to make sure that radiation is used properly at different hospital sites and so on and so forth. Number two, we do testing to find out the different levels of radiation coming out at the different settings, and then we can give recommendations to radiologists, interventional radiologists, those who are using these machines. Um, cardiologists use a form of fluoroscopy. Uh, they use something called a cath lab. Uh, so we have these different professions that use fluoroscopy. We have cardiology, we actually have neurosurgery, we have uh, interventional radiology. Those are some of the main people that use fluoroscopy. Um, the other fields that, uh, that, if you go into different fields or careers, you could think about being a nurse in an interventional cardiology department or a nurse in an interventional radiology department. So there's a lot of careers I know I've mentioned there, and our course will go into more detail. <clears throat> I want to encourage my friends, though, if you are working in a field that you love and enjoy, why don't you consider making a video like this, a short video like the one I've just made, and please send it to me. You can send it through Google Drive. Uh, you can share the file with me. And the idea is imagine if we created a bank of 100 videos like this, going over different careers, telling people how we got into our careers, what we find fascinating, and maybe encouraging them to explore the career that we have. And the idea is that our young people can hear many people's stories and begin to think about their career options, right? So who are the people who should consider medical physics? If you do not like flexibility, like if you are not flexible, if you're very rigid, I made up a word called flexibility index. If your flexibility index is low, don't be a medical physicist. Here's why. Because a medical physicist needs to be ready if a tube goes out and it's fixed. A medical physicist in many states is required to go out and test that unit. That means that you could be going home on a Friday at 4 o'clock and find out that there's a new tube four hours away from you uh, and they need that unit on Saturday morning. So guess what? You have to travel out of town four hours away, right? And that's not the case for me all the time. I'm just saying I have learned that flexibility is very important in choosing a career. 
There are several reasons why I got into medical physics, and I'll talk about that in future videos. But part of that has to do with my education background, which led to a very good friend of mine, uh, working with a good friend of mine in this field. And so medical physicists need the following. Number one, they need to be flexible in, in the choices of, you know, like they need to be flexible, right? Knowing that they can have a choice to go to one city one day and find out they're going to another city because there's a new x-ray tube that uh, needs to be tested, which is where you're checking the radiation levels and the image quality from that unit. So you need flexibility to be a medical physicist. You need to love mathematics. You need to love using computers and Excel especially. You need to be comfortable with uh, using different forms of radiation meters, which you can learn when you do a master's degree in medical physics, which is part of my training. So those are different things you need to be a medical physicist. physicist. Math, physics, flexibility. Now, with that said, I don't have to work eight to four every day. That's not, a medical physicist has way more flexibility in their job also, so that's a perk. So keep that in mind when you think of medical physics. So I will recommend, if you are good in math, if you're good in physics, if you like variety, if you like traveling, especially if you wanna be a consulting physicist, then you should really consider um, going to school for a bachelor's degree in physics or chemistry, and then getting a master's degree in medical physics. You can do all of that by the age of 23 easily. And a master's degree in medical physics is probably, you know, and it's not about the money. Please, none of these professions should be about the money. But in terms of uh, taking care of needs and, and having a good job, medical physicists, are take, they take good care of them. So that's a blessing. Now, that's part of my, my medical physics training is part of why I'm able to do some of the things I do in education because it gives me some flexibility and some uh, opportunities to help uh, in the education field. And so... Keep that in mind that as a medical physicist, you can actually have some of your side interests and, 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 and still do them. Um, it's a great field, there's a huge need. So please let me know if you're interested in medical physics. My bachelor's degree was in chemistry, so I'll make another video about my passion for chemistry. But basically chemistry, physics, mathematics, philosophy, history and philosophy of science, those are the things I love. And of course, theology, studying the Bible and learning and, and applying it to our, to our lives by God's grace. That's, that's part of my, that, that's my passion. So that's my story, a little bit there. I wanna encourage my friends to please consider recording a five to 10 minute video. What do you do for a job? How did you get into it? Do you, you know, what do you love about it? What are the skill sets that are necessary to do that job? Let's make, let's get this movement going. Let's make an app and let's just have a ton of videos going over different careers. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to subscribe for more videos about careers, life, and, and, and just living a life that makes sense. Have a blessed day and thanks for hanging out with me in uh, this surgery uh, center. Take care. Have a blessed day.